Okay, so the flip-flop and the SR flip-flop is the first one we're going to learn about. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because you have to look at interactions between two gates that are connected in sort of a feedback fashion like this. So <clears throat> needs a little bit of ex explanation and this simulation which I've uh, included the link on the uh, website under SR flip-flops. This simulation gives you a little bit of an idea visually what's going on. So this is more or less the same circuit that is in the notes with a couple of NOR gates, two input NOR gates. And there's two inputs to think of this whole thing as a block, which is a flip-flop. There's two inputs, one called R for reset, one called S for set. And there's two outputs Q and Q0. Uh, in the first part of the notes you'll see that this is referred to as P. So P and Q are uh, the two outputs. Alright, so one of the things is that you don't know at first what the status of the outputs is, the status of the gates, so you have to assume something. And it'll turn out uh, later that um, as long as you don't get too crazy with this, uh, what you, whatever you assume can turn out to be right, or you can correct it just by watching what happens. Okay, so we're going to assume that, for instance, Q is low, and low with logic here is going to be uh, noted with black, and red is going to indicate a high. And then what we've got here is, uh, for the inputs, we can click them to say, okay, I'm going to apply a high here, and I can take it away. High, and take it away. And what we see is with the flip-flop, which is this whole thing, with Q low and Q not high, and they tend to be, they're going to want to be in opposite states when the thing is stable, that we can click reset as many times as we want, and because Q is the primary or non-inverting output and Q is the inverting output, doing a reset takes it back to basically the, the base state, if you will, where it's got a, a Q is, is low. However, if we click the set, and it quickly changes, and if we click the set once or several times, what we see is we're going to set the Q to a high state, and the Q not is going to go to a low state. If we then click reset again, and this goes pretty quickly in the simulation, but you can see it kind of ripple through. So I'm going to reset, and everything changes. And after I get it back to this state, clicking the reset a bunch of times doesn't do anything. Just like clicking the set makes one change, but after that, the whole thing's stable. So <clears throat> it's stable in one of two states, either being in the reset state, where Q is logic low, and then further changes on R don't do anything, or it can be in the set state, and Q is high, and Q naught is low, and further changes on the set don't do anything. And then obviously if you go back and forth and reset it, and set it, and reset it, and set it, so you can see this going back and forth. Now you've noticed one thing I'm always doing is I'm setting this high for resetting and then I'm setting it back. So it's basically, if you think about it, I'm applying a pulse, a short-lived logic state, onto the reset, or I'm applying a pulse onto the set. So I'm, I'm commanding a reset, I'm commanding a set, but I'm not leaving it there. Uh, what you'll see is if I set both of these high, what happens while they're both high, this latch, this uh, flip-flop, will have two low states. And then if I let go of that one, if I bring this one back low first, this will go to a high state and stay there. Now if I take it back to the state where both sides are low and let go of this one first, then this goes to a low state. So, <clears throat> as the notes say, you want to avoid having both of these set high, not necessarily because you don't know what will happen 
when they're both set high, but because you don't know what will happen when they transition, when you stop that, when you get out of that state. So everything's deterministic up until the time you have both of these going, and then it depends which one goes low first is going to have the influence on what the output does. So if you want to, you can play around with this simulator and uh, kind of see how things work. And it has, in this particular website, it's got both the SR flip-flop made out of NOR gates and made out of NAND gates. Uh, NAND gates work pretty much the same except instead of setting it and resetting it with high logic, we're going to reset it with low logic. So, for instance, here, if I set, I set this by, you see the Q goes high by set, by applying a low logic to the S pin. So everything's, as we expect, if we have NANs versus NORs, everything will be the dual of what we saw before. If I want to reset it, I apply a, a low here, and that resets Q. And as long, and I get into trouble when I have them both low, rather than when they're both high. So if they're both low, the outputs both go to a high state, and then what happens next determined by the, the order of which these then transition states. Okay, so for either one of these types of flip-flops, also called latches, I'm going to want to apply a pulse and then take it away, and then apply a pulse and take it away. So that's, that's how memory is written. Uh, it's not a level, it's an edge. I'm going to apply something, look for a pulse, and that will be the action that I want to see when I'm dealing with these flip-flops. All right, so if playing around with this simulation helps, uh, take a look at that, and uh, it's a little bit more visual than what we have in the notes.